In example one, we are able to find the area under the curve using the formula area equals length times width. Since that straight horizontal line formed a rectangular region, that basic geometric formula worked. Unfortunately though, most curves won't fit to one of our nice geometric patterns or one of our nice geometric shapes. So what we're gonna have to do is force initially to get these approximations, we're gonna force some basic geometric shapes to fit our curve. So in example two, we wanna approximate the area under the curve, f of x equals two over x, on this given domain with n equals four subintervals. So the problem that we actually want to evaluate that we're gonna end up approximating is that we want to integrate the function two over x dx from x equals one to x equals five. So this is the problem that we want to evaluate. We're gonna look at three different approaches using rectangular regions to come up with some approximations. So this approach to applying rectangular regions is referred to as using Riemann sums. So named for the mathematician who came up with this idea. We have three different methods that we're gonna look at. The first is a left endpoint method. So we know that we wanna look at the interval from one to five. So we're looking at this domain from one to five. The left endpoint method says that we're gonna start with the left endpoint of each interval. So our first interval begins at one. And we're gonna draw a line up until we hit that function. And then we're gonna square that off into a rectangle. In this case, we want n equals four subintervals. So we want four rectangles. So our first rectangular region will stretch from one to two. At two, we have the left endpoint for our next subinterval, our next rectangle. So we'll head up until we hit the function and square off another rectangular region and continue repeating that process until we have all four rectangular regions. So what we can pick up on pretty quickly is that with each of these rectangular regions, we're including some area that's not actually under our curve. So that's where this idea comes in that we're creating an approximation. We're not gonna get an exact result because we're including more information than we actually want to. So our left endpoint method works in that way. Our right endpoint method is very similar. The only thing that changes is we're gonna use the right endpoint to create each of those intervals. So that first interval is still from one to two, but we're gonna start at the right endpoint, which is two, and draw a line up until we hit our function, and then close that off into a rectangular region. We'll do the same thing from two to three, from three to four, and then from four to five, till we have our four rectangular regions. And what we see this time is we have some area that we're failing to include. So even though in a couple of those cases there's not much. So in this case, in this first example, we're gonna come up with an overestimate because we're calculating more area than we want to. In this second version, we're gonna come up with an underestimate since we're not including all of the area we want to. And then the third method we'll look at is a midpoint method. So the midpoint method, what we do is take the midpoint of each of those inter intervals so halfway between one and two is one and a half. So we'll use one and a half to draw up to our function and then close off our rectangle from there. We'll do the same thing at two and a half. At three and a half. And at four and a half. So my picture got a little sloppy there, but that should be closing off at four. So what we can see here is in, we still have a little bit of an overestimate, a little bit of an underestimate. So some pieces that we're missing and some extra pieces we're including, but overall that amount of extra space is reduced quite a bit when we use that midpoint method. So let's look at actually constructing these approximations, evaluating these approximations and compare them to the exact result. 
So our exact result should be the natural log of 25, which is approximately 3.219. So this should be our actual exact answer. In each of these cases, we're going to come up with numbers that are close to, but not quite equal to that value. So switching over to Wolfram Alpha, we can ask it to integrate our function 2 over x, first using a left endpoint method. From x equals 1 to 5, so that domain we're, domain we're considering, with four subintervals. So what we're going to get is our approximate result. And it's also going to give us a picture of what Wolfram Alpha is constructing. So this should match up pretty well with our sketch. We can see even a little bit better here that overestimate, so that additional area that we're including in each of those rectangular regions. So in this case, we get a value of 4.167. which if we compare that to our exact result, 3.219, we see that we're again getting an overestimate, which again is coming from the fact that those rectangular regions are including more area than we want to consider. We can consider a right endpoint method, so we can keep all the other information the same, we just need to change the method. Again, we end up with a picture that should look more or less like our sketch, but we get an even clearer depiction of that area that we're not including. So we have these gaps, area that should be in part of our calculations, but is being missed. So this method gives us an area of 2.567. So compared to our exact result of 3.219, in this case we're getting an underestimate. And then we can look at our midpoint method, which based off our picture that we've drawn, should be our most precise method. We get an area of 3.149. So again, we can still see there's some area we're not including and some additional area that we are including. So we're not getting a perfect result, but we are getting something much closer to our actual result. So in this case, we get a value of 3.149. The actual precise area would round to about 3.219. So with this midpoint method, we're getting something that's fairly close to that actual des that desired result, that actual exact value. So let's look at doing this exact same thing with a different function. So the only thing that's going to be changing in this example is the original function that we're considering and the interval or the domain that we're integrating across. We're still using four subintervals. We're still looking at using the left, right, and point, and midpoint of each subinterval. So we can change this. Instead of integrating 2 over x, now we want to integrate the function 0.02x to the fourth minus 1.44x squared plus 76. We can do this backwards. We'll start with the midpoint method. We want to integrate from 4 to 12 using four subintervals. So again, we get that picture of what we're actually evaluating we get an approximate area of 782.24. If we look at using a right endpoint method, we get an area of 1062.4. And then if we look at using a left endpoint method, we get an approximate area of 611.84.
So for each of these different methods, let's see, we got for the left endpoint, 611.84. For the right endpoint, 1062.4. And for the midpoint, 782.24. So what we're actually looking to evaluate in this problem is to integrate this function from x equals 4 to 12, integrating this function f of x, the exact result should come out to be 800.512. So when we look at our midpoint method, again, we see that we get something that's relatively close. The difference between 782 and 800 isn't terribly large. So we're getting our best approximation when we look at that midpoint method. But what's a little bit different is that in this case, the right endpoint is actually the overestimate, and the left endpoint is the underestimate. So whether the left endpoint or right endpoint is the underestimate or overestimate has to do with the curve of the graph. But essentially what we have are three different methods for approximating the area under the curve using rectangles. They're, none of them are going to be precise, completely precise, but whether we look at using left endpoints, right endpoints, or the midpoint of each region, we have a few different methods using this technique of Riemann sums to come up with that approximate area.